And this morning, uh, the children's story is about Peter being set free. It's found in Acts 12, if you'd like to look at it. And so you children, I'd like you to think about this. Peter was in jail, and he had chains on him, and he had a guard outside and inside and at the prison door. And an angel came to him and tapped him on the shoulder and said, Get up, arise up. And he got up. And the door of the jail swung open, and the guard didn't say anything, and the guard outside didn't say anything, and he walked out. And then he got to the outside of the prison, and the guard didn't pay attention there, and the door swung open, and Peter walked out. What I'm telling you this morning is Jesus can set us free, and he can set us free not only from physical problems, but also from uh, our sins. And that's what we need to do, is be set free from our sins. God can do anything, and he will set us free. He wants us to have freedom to choose, and we always have that freedom to choose. So, loving Father, we thank you as we come this morning. And we ask, Father, for your sweet spirit to be in this place and to touch each heart that's listening. And, Father, that you would uh, anoint... Uh, my lips this morning and anoint the hearts of those that are watching for we ask it in Jesus name amen so this morning I would like to speak about Memorial Day you know it's a special time of the year when we remember those that have given their lives for their family their friends and specifically for this country and a week after Pearl Harbor uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, those who long enjoy such privileges, talking about our freedom, uh, forget in time that others have died to make that happen. Okay? Freedom is never free. And it costs many patriots their lives. And as Americans today, we are facing a battle for souls for Jesus for this nation. The erosion of our society has been slow and steady, but now it has accelerated in these days just before Jesus comes at a pace that's almost unbelievable. I believe there's a demonic force at work pushing us to the point of self-destruction because we're not following God as we need to. And in history, it sure always has a way of repeating itself. And I'd like to take you to Daniel 5 for this story. Because in Daniel 5, we find the collapse of the culture and the country. Okay? They had become so comfortable that they thought nobody could invade them and um, that they would be okay. But I want you to know today, we too are in the valley of destruction. It's coming our way more, more than most people think. And my prayer is that we might be a more repentant people and seek God while we can. And so in line with, and to be in line with his will, not their will. Okay? Now Belshazzar had a problem. And it's the same in our country today. Okay? Have we forgotten God? as they, they did in their past, okay? Nebuchadnezzar had to learn the lessons the hard way. And I'd like you to look at Daniel chapter 4 and verse 37. And it says, as Daniel had, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had to learn, in those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said. Those who walk in pride, he is able to humble, Okay? Proverbs 16, 18 says, And pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. America used to honor God in everything, openly and unashamedly. And in fact, in the monuments all over our country, but especially in our nation's capital, you find inscriptions and pictures depicting Bible scenes. And the words will be Bible verses. It's printed on our money. And we used to credit him with every blessing that we had. And we would 
praise him for all the blessings, the successes, and we prayed about all of our challenges. But today we seem to have lost our sense of who is in control of this world. What made America so great was our God and still is our God. But we have fallen from where we once were. I'm afraid we've become more like Babylon than we should be. And the price we will pay will be great. But I want to take you to another Bible verse. And it's found in Revelation 13, 11. Because this too predicted the fall of the United States. And it says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns. And those two horns represented civil and religious liberty. And it says, And it spoke like a lamb... But later it spoke as a dragon. Okay? Now we need to understand how Babylon fell. The city had walls so thick that two chariots could pass one another in opposite directions at a good clip of speed and it wouldn't even phase them. That's how thick the walls were. They thought they were impregnable. They had walls so high, so thick, that nobody could get through. But God let Babylon fall because of their wickedness and because of their turning from him. You know, they fell because of their pride. And God gave the Medes and the Persians the entrance through the inner walls when they redirected the Euphrates River that flowed through the center of the city. And they redirected it. And the Medes, especially Darius, walked up the river bank and into the city through the open gates that were there to, to have access to the water. Now I would like to ask, could it be that America has gotten so proud of its military, economic, and medical superiority and power that we're now on the verge of being overthrown? I believe we've lost our sense of morality, of right and wrong. And in Hollywood, on the internet, cell phones, um, movies, TV, sexual perversion, abortion, and all kinds of immoral things are taking place and infiltrating our youth in particular, but society in general. Drugs have polluted our society. Society, Men and women have stopped leading their families in spiritual things and what is morally right. And people have become too busy with things outside the home to take care of the family inside the home. And too many adults, and therefore children, are undisciplined and have lost all sense of restraint and moral right and wrong. And so I'd like you to think about that this morning. That God wants to use us to change things. Christians. In Daniel's time, he saw Babylon crumbling from within. They had abandoned all restraints. There was not respect for that which was sacred. It was party time. I'd like you to look at Daniel 5.5 5 with me. It says, The fingers of the man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plas- of the walls of the king's palace. Now that made Belshazzar take notice. That really sobered him up real quick. And verse 6 goes on to say, And then the king's countenance changed. Mine would too. I saw a finger writing on the wall. My countenance would change too. And his thoughts troubled him, it says. And so the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked together. I guess he was a little upset. His knees were knocking together. Verse 7 goes on to say, And then the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, Chaldean soothsayers. Verse 8, Now all the king's wise men came in, 
but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed, and his lords were astonished. And then we read down a little bit, and it says, the queen says, oh, but you've forgotten. There is somebody that can understand these things. Daniel. And so the king called for Daniel. And it says about Daniel, Inasmuch an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding and interpreting dreams and solving riddles and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give an interpretation. You see, Daniel wasn't invited to this terrible party. Because when your liquor is flowing and the women are running around, godly people are not invited, nor do they want to be there. So Daniel wasn't there, but that's okay. He got called in. God made sure of that. Okay? And the writing on the walls puts the king in the crisis mode. And he needs answers now. Not a few minutes from now, but now. And a strange silence came over the whole group. They wanted to know about this writing on the wall. You and I would want to know too. So Daniel was the only one that was calm as he walks into the room. And the king promised him all kinds of things. Even to be third in the realm. But Daniel's not interested in that. Verse 22 of Daniel 5 says, But you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. You see, Belshazzar, he knew all that Nebuchadnezzar's father had gone through. He knew all of it. And yet, he chose to go the other way. But God is able to humble those that choose not to follow him. And then Daniel reads the writing on the wall, verse 25. And it says, And this is the inscription that was written, Meeny, meeny, tekel, you Verse 26, And this is the interpreter of each word. Meeny, God has numbered your kingdom and is finished. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. What a thing to say to the king. That very night, the kingdom would fall. And indeed, it did. That very night, Darius the Mede conquered Babylon from within. I want us to think about something. Could it be that God is going to allow our country to be overturned from within because of the immorality going on in our nation? And verse 30 and 31 tell us that. I believe God is coming soon. And with him, judgment. People need to turn to Jesus now while there's time. I believe what we're going through is part of this one world government pushing its, enforcing its way on each one of us. That's what this is all about. That's why the closing of churches. Walmart's open. Sam's is open. But the churches can't be. The church is just as essential to the faith of the people as food is at Walmart or Albertsons or Sam's or wherever. People are in there elbow to elbow almost and maybe closer. But they can't come and be separated by a little distance and worship the God that gives them the faith to go on? This government, this one world leadership is trying to take our freedoms away and push for control of the masses, taking away our ability to choose when and where to work. I want to tell you this, this, this morning, God is our only hope. He will lead us through to the kingdom that he's prepared for us. If you read 
John 14, 1 through 3. He's made a place for us, and he's coming. No, we don't go there. He's coming to get us, to take us, but only if we love him enough to follow him. There is a last night for every person and every nation. In light of eternity, our days are numbered. And we need to have a sense of urgency in seeking Jesus and his righteousness. So on this Memorial Day weekend, I want us to remember those that have fought to make this country free. But I also want you to think about something else. Jesus died to give us the chance for eternity where we will be free from death and suffering and pain and disease and all the things that we go through here. Jesus is our only hope. And as we, as we think about that, all we have to do is repent, confess our sins, and ask him to come in and take over our lives, to live out his will in our life daily. I want us to take, go back to Revelation 13, 11, because I want to point out something here that everybody needs to be reminded of. This country will not always be free. And Revelation 13, 11 says that. It says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And I don't have time to explain all of that this morning, but I want to explain this. It's talking about the United States. It says, Coming up out of the earth. This country didn't have many people had some engines on it, and that was it, where Europe had many, many people, so they come up out of the sea. We come up out of the earth where there wasn't many people. And it says, and he had two horns, and those two horns represent religious and civil freedoms. This country was meant to be free for a time. But it says, it was like a lamb at the beginning, and this country has been like a lamb or like Jesus at the beginning. But now we're getting to this next stage, which says, but it will speak like a dragon. So the time is coming and is very short now when the devil will work his wonders as he has been in corrupting this country and the people and turn this country into a dragon, the, that is one that persecutes all the Christians. We see it coming in other places, but it's coming here too. I was just listening to a report about China. They're now persecuting pastors. They're not allowing pastors to have religious services when people die, or any pastor, or any religious services when people die. It's just what the state wants and that's it. And if you want it and you push on it, you can be locked up. They're bulldozing down churches in China. It's coming, folks. It's coming to this country too because the Bible is always true. And it says, although we were once like a lamb, this country will speak like the dragon not too far from now. And so I want to counsel you. Now is the time to get ready because Jesus is coming soon, ready or not, and I want you to be ready. Would you pray with me? Loving Father, we ask that you would be with each one that's viewing, and Father, that you would bless and help each one to draw close to you, get in your word, and let your Holy Spirit speak to each one, to each heart, as never before. And we give you the honor and the glory and the praise. And Father, I pray that each one viewing this will be ready for your soon appearing. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.